Jim Jordan is an effective legislator. The Honorable Jim Jordan of the state of Ohio has received 194. The Honorable Hakeem Jeffries of the state of New York has received 210. No person having received a majority, the whole number of votes cast by surname, a speaker has not been elected. Humiliating as that was, that was not actually the death blow to MAGA insurrectionist Jim Jordan's quest for the House Speaker's gavel, tying the record for the fewest number of votes for a majority nominee. After retreating to yet another conference meeting in a secret ballot vote, Republicans voted against continuing to support Jordan as their speaker designee after a week of wasting everyone's time trying to get him to the necessary 217 votes. So two and a half weeks after booting Kevin McCarthy, House Republicans are right back to where they started. No House speaker, no plan to find one. Jordan's Donald Trump style intimidation campaign backfired spectacularly. His detractors remained unmoved despite harassing text messages sent to their wives like the ones shared by Nebraska Congressman Don Bacon, or the death threat several of the holdouts said they received, even as some of their colleagues tried to downplay the harassment as just part of the job. So far, I've had four death threats. I've been evicted from my uh, office in, uh, the, in Colorado. Uh, I have notice of an eviction um, because the landlord is mad. For not building, voting the will of their voters and their constituents, they're feeling that pressure um, as they should. The people want Jim Jordan. Today, we're getting you know, more, more of these uh, text things about you know, uh, rhinos are stopping Jim Jordan. True leaders are, are followed, are followed. I have to follow you because you know, you're my leader. I don't have to be pushed into you to be a leader. But it might help to ask why Republicans, and Jim Jordan specifically, put themselves and us through this, despite knowing for a week that Jordan didn't have the votes. The answer may lie in who has been helping to fuel the chaos, namely right-wing media figures, from Fox's Sean Hannity to right-wing podcaster and the man who bragged about making Breitbart.com the home of the white nationalist alt-right, former Trump White House advisor Steve Bannon. The Washington Post reported that Bannon had been publicizing the phone numbers of House Republicans. And Matt Gates went on his show to praise Bannon, Bannon viewers for the deluge of calls. Before today's vote, Bannon, who has been sentenced to four months in prison for defying congressional subpoenas and will go on trial for defrauding Trump voters with a fake build the wall scheme, was urging Jordan to keep up the abuse. Jim Jordan's finally listening. Get to the floor and keep voting. Rip their mask off. Let the whole nation, and particularly their district see, particularly these Southern congressmen, corrupt up to their eyeballs, the Appropriators and Armed Services Committee. Expose them to the nation. Let them sit there round after round and let their constituents see them. So now, after Jordan's very public and spectacular failure, the House will go home for the weekend after 17 days with no speaker. In his speech last night, President Biden made the case for military and economic aid to Israel and Ukraine. But that will have to wait. In a statement, the White, a White House spokesman said, House Republicans need to end their chaotic infighting and their competitions to out-extreme one another and instead join President Biden in working on urgent priorities. Since Republicans' lowest priority is apparently a functional House of Representatives, they'll meet again on Monday for a candidate forum. So far, at least, 10 Republicans are running or considering a run with an eye towards a Tuesday floor vote. Joining me now is Congressman Eric Swalwell of California and Charlie Sykes, editor-at-large of The Bulwark and an MSNBC contributor. Congressman, I do want to start with you by playing a little sound mash that includes uh, Kevin McCarthy, Matt Gates, and one Dusty Johnson of South Dakota. Roll them. We'll have to go back to the drawing board. What history will look at... The crazy eights led by Gates, the amount of damage they have done to this party and to this country is insurmountable. I've never seen this amount of damage done to just a few people for their own personalities, for their own fear of what's going through. And really, um, it's astonishing to me. And um, we are in a very bad position as a party. Obviously, we're in unprecedented times. I think this continues to show how terribly irresponsible it was for 208 Democrats and eight Republicans to put this house into chaos. The most popular Republican in the United States Congress was just knifed by a secret ballot. 
Congressman Swalwell, I will give Kevin McCarthy uh, credit for growth, at least temporary growth. Maybe it'll be like his reversal on January 6th when he said Trump was to blame only to run and fall to his knees at Trump's feet. But he at least is now admitting it was the Republicans. <laughs> is that is that a good sign uh, <laughs> that he's found real? I don't know. What are your thoughts? <laughs> Baby steps. Joy, just to <laughs> welcome Kevin McCarthy back to reality it was Kevin McCarthy who struck all of these deals with the loan sharks in his party so he could become a speaker. He's the one that created the environment that one person could wreak this chaos and throw him out within his own party. And he was just so desperate to be speaker, not a leader, that he hung on for a couple months and then they all called in the loans and he couldn't pay up. And that's why He's out. So it's actually really also very rich that he was the one nominating Jim Jordan. I couldn't think of a worse person to nominate me than the guy that had just got thrown out. It's funny if this was a comedy. It's not funny when you consider what is at stake. And the Republicans have shown themselves as an opposition party. They're not a governing party. And the moment requires more than Republicans can offer. And the only path forward to fund the government when funding runs out in a couple of weeks, to fund the humanitarian needs in the Middle East and to stand with Israel as it defends itself and to stand with Ukraine as it defends freedom against Russia. The only way forward is a bipartisan governing coalition. And we could keep raising our hands and saying, take yes for an answer. We're here to give you those votes. Uh, Charlie, you know, it, there was a gentleman, one of the members of uh, the Republican caucus said, you know, a leader leads and people want to get behind them. You don't have to right. threaten um, and, and give death threats to make people get behind you. That's not a leader. And Jim Jordan did try that. He tried that sort of Trump strategy. And Trump, you know, has right. made thuggishness and political violence standard in the Republican Party. Exactly. I think that is, to me, the most stunning thing, yep. that he's normalized yep. the idea of political violence so much that Nancy May says, you know, it's just part of the job to get death threats. Oh, really? OK, so that's where we are now. I guess that's where we are now, at least among Republicans. Yeah, that, that's where we are now. Uh, but uh, keep in mind, though, that the playbook did not work this time. I mean, the good news is that you had uh, more than 20 Republicans that stood up against Donald Trump, um, Steve Bannon, and thought that the idea of electing Jim Jordan was too absurd and too dangerous. So that is the good news. The bad news, however, is that the chaos is going to continue. The chaos is going to continue because the conference itself is the chaos. This remains um, Trump's party. Uh, this remains a party that is still afraid of what Steve Bannon has to say. And for Steve Bannon, this kind of chaos, this kind of fear is is a ladder. Uh, this is this is his this is his brand. And uh, he has to be very, very frustrated that it did not work this time. Um, again, maybe just a green shoot that you had two dozen Republicans that looked around and said, hey, maybe we ought to stand up against the bullies. Maybe we ought to stand up against the threats. Um, maybe the critical mass um, will mean something. I don't know. Um, it, hasn't, it hasn't in the past. But this was interesting. It was so naked. It was so confident that if we attack people, if we threaten them, that they will cave in because they have before. And to your point, that you have people like Nancy Mace, and, and, and it was others as well, who kind of said, well, this is a red herring, this is no big deal, this is what you expect. That really was a sign that they have normalized and they expect that this kind of tactic is legitimate and this will drive the Republican conference. To stay with you for just a second, Charlie, I just want to remind people who Steve Bannon is. Besides saying that he made Breitbart the home of the alt-right, which is a cleaned-up word for yeah. white nationalism, um, he has been found guilty of two counts of contempt of Congress. He was fined $6,500. It was stayed on appeal, sentenced to four months incarceration. Um, he was indicted on five felony counts, including money laundering, scheming to defraud a conspiracy in connection with his role in a fundraising effort to essentially lie to Trump supporters and say they were going to fund building the wall. It was a lie. They were spending it on their own personal fund. Uh, the Southern District of New York has uh, he was pardoned by Trump for one count of conspiracy to commit wire fraud in that same scheme. So this is somebody who defrauded the very people right. <laughs> he claims he's trying to get a speaker for. And yet he essentially is giving the, str the strategery to the Republican conference. And has been for a long time. Look, I mean, Steve Bannon is who he's been telling us he is. He He's a grifter, he's an extremist, and he is a thug. And remember, when Donald Trump came into office, he was installed in a very, very uh, significant position in the White House, you know, with the ear of the president of the United States. 
So he's going to keep doing what he's doing. He's already launching a campaign against uh, Tom Emmer, who is the number three Republican who's been endorsed by Kevin McCarthy. Uh, Tom Emmer committed the terrible crime of actually voting to certify the election of, of, of Joe Biden. So this mess is nowhere close to being done at all until yeah, they do what all. Congressman Swalwell said, you know, say, hey, we're going to have to deal um, with the Democrats. We're going to have to have a bipartisan majority. But right now, that's a red line for most of them. Let's come back to you and give you the last word on this, um, Representative Swalwell. I'm going to put up the list of the people who are putting themselves forward for Speaker Kevin Hearn, you know, Jody Arrington, Byron Donalds, who, you know, the, the guy who got his head rubbed by uh, the guy who believes in lynching in Texas. Are any of these people, most of them didn't vote to certify the election. Are any of these people viable? Uh, no, and, and they could put it on monster.com or like, you know, whatever job search engine <laughs> they want. It, it's become that ludicrous. Uh, and, and the only path forward uh, is to come to Democrats. And, and Joy, if, if you have crossed the Rubicon where you're not going to let death threats get in the way of you doing what you think is the right thing, then you've, you've already uh, shown the courage, you know, to do the right thing. And, and, and now the only path forward, the only way to get the majority of votes is to work with us, as I said, to keep government open, to fund Ukraine. You know, there's not much more that we really have to do uh, other than those efforts. And, and so we're just ready. We're standing ready to get things done. But let me just show you how unserious they are. One of their members, a Republican who had voted for Jordan, traveled to Israel today and missed the vote because he said he was going on a fact-finding mission in Israel. No, go on a speaker-finding mission here so we can get things done. We stand ready. We're competent. They're chaotic. Congressman Eric Swalwell, Charlie Sykes, thank you both.